Okay, so now we get to our next subtopic in topic four, uh, which is going away from statistics now and looking at probability. So uh, how is it measured? Well, you should know by now that probability is measured on a scale from zero to one. Okay, if you're doing decimals, uh, you could also say it's from zero percent to a hundred percent. Uh, either way, uh, fractions, decimals, percentage, uh, any of them it would be fine. Okay, and what does that scale mean? Uh, well, uh, we've got a line from 0 to 1 here. Okay, 1 would be certain. Okay, and this is completely certain. There's no room for exaggeration here. There is absolutely no chance that um, it could not happen. Okay, it will happen. Okay, zero. Okay, there's absolutely no chance. Okay, if you tried it a million times, uh, it would happen zero times. Okay, completely impossible. Okay, so for those, maybe uh, rolling less than or equal to six on a dice, uh, or impossible, rolling a seven on a dice, for example. Okay, and then in between them, um, well, near to zero is um, not likely, okay, and closer to one is more likely, okay, and in the middle we have sort of a 50-50 chance of something happening, uh, for example, the main example would be heads or tails on a coin, so the probability of tails um, being uh, flipped is 50%. 0.5. Okay, and lastly, um, maybe we've got one sixth here. This would be probability of rolling a five on a dice, for example. Um, okay, one out of the six faces. Uh, but we should unpack why this is true, really. Okay, and this brings us to our first rule. Okay, if an event has uh, a number of outcomes that all have uh, identical probabilities, so uh, dice, you would say that uh, essentially all six uh, outcomes are equally likely. Uh, so this would apply for a dice. Um, well, if you have outcomes with all uh, identical probabilities, then the probability of A occurring is the number of outcomes in event A over the number of total outcomes. Okay, so event A could be uh, a collection of outcomes, like rolling an even number on a dice, or getting less than four on a dice. Okay, it doesn't have to be a dice. Um, now, this, this notation here, N A, Okay, it would be uh, how many outcomes are included in your event. Okay, um, so in this example, probability of getting less than or equal to six, or how many uh, outcomes are in are included in that event? Six. How many total uh, outcomes are there? Also six. Okay, six over six is one, as it says here. Um, well, let's see some other examples. Okay, so probability of getting five on a dice. Uh, this is one we did above. Um, well, there's only one five on a dice. There are six total outcomes. Okay, so one out of six, as you would expect. Okay, as it seems intuitive. Um, can get a little bit trickier there. What about probability of uh, picking a card at random from a deck of shuffled cards? And what's the probability of getting a pitcher card? This would mean a, a jack, queen, or a king. Uh, well, we can use our formula above. Okay, this formula here. So how many outcomes are in this pitcher card event? Um, well, there are four jacks, four queens, four kings, so 12 pitcher cards in a deck of cards. 
out of how many cards? 52. Okay, you should probably uh, learn that, that there are 52 uh, cards in a deck. Okay, and then we would simplify this fraction to get 3 out of 12, uh, 3 out of 13, sorry, um, because, well, that also makes sense because uh, 3 of the, uh, well, it's, it's 3 of the numbers uh, out of 13 possible, 1 to 10 uh, plus Jack, Queen, King. Okay, so 3 out of 13 would be the probability of getting that picture card. Okay, so just one event happening. Um, it should be quite easy to calculate uh, the probability. Uh, although, I mean, many events uh, aren't that simple. Okay, you've got things like calculating the probability of a football team winning a match, the probability of an earthquake occurring tomorrow. Okay, some things uh, are hard or impossible to calculate the probability. Okay, so. That's just one simple way of doing it in uh, situations such as dice, cards, uh, and things like that. Okay, so what about combinations of different events uh, occurring? Um, what if I wanted to find the probability of picking a card at random and the probability of it being a jack or an odd number? Well, um... Firstly, let's say what the probability of picking a jack is. It's 4 out of 52, uh, which is also 1 out of 13. An odd number? Well, um, there are 20 odd numbers, uh, if we're including aces. Um, which will simplify to 5 out of 13. Now, uh, we still can use that first formula that we looked at. Um, so we could just say how many cards are jacks or odds? Uh, well, 4 plus 20, okay, 24 out of 52. Now, I could just now simplify that, get 24 over 52, uh, which would simplify to 6 out of 13. But let's just have a look at, um, well, a different route here. Uh, just to help us find a rule. Uh, I could split this up into 4 over 52 plus 20 over 52, um, which was actually what we had uh, above with these individual probabilities. So what I've actually found here is that the probability of getting a jack or an odd is the probability of getting a jack plus probability of getting an odd. Okay, plus being the important part here. Okay, which brings us to our rule. Okay, the probability of event A occurring or event B occurring uh, is equal to the probability of A occurring plus the probability of B occurring. Now, uh, this only works though uh, if they are mutually exclusive. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, there is no overlap in the events, okay? There is no way of both events occurring simultaneously, okay? So there was no way I could get, I could pick a card and it would be a jack and an odd, um, okay? Jacks and odd numbers are completely separate, okay? Um, and we will get to what happens if they are not mutually exclusive uh, later on in the topic. So can we use this formula? Um, well, I got this uh, bag of, I don't know, tokens here. Um, and I want to know the probability of getting a green or a blue. Uh, well, our formula above suggests that that's, that can be found by uh, finding the probability of green individually and blue individually, um, then adding them up. So probability of getting a green, well, there's three out of the total seven. Blue, 2 out of 7. Okay, add them, simply 5 out of 7. Uh, which you could also find by just counting the blues or greens in the first place. Okay, uh, I mean, that's where the formula came from in the first place, so that uh, makes sense. 5 sevenths. Now, 
Um, what happens if I want to know a probability of one event happening and another event happening? Um, well, I've got this bag again. Um, what if I have two picks of a uh, token and uh, I pick one, I look at it, and then I put it back and then pick another one at random. Now, what's the probability of getting a green and then getting another green? Well, um, I've got this uh, sort of sample space diagram here, this array. Um, this might be my first pick, this might be my second pick. Now, I've ticked the ones where I get a green and a green. Um, so here you can see that I have nine, um, where I've got green and green, uh, out of a total of 49. Okay, so it looks like the probability here is 9 out of 49. Um, okay, that was easy enough. Um, but was there a different way of doing that? Well, uh, if we start with the premise that it is 9 out of 49, then we can conveniently see that, actually I could have got 9 out of 49 by doing 3 sevenths times 3 sevenths. Okay, and 3 sevenths was their individual probabilities. Okay, so basically a uh, probability of getting a green and a green could be found by uh, doing probability of green times probability of green. Okay, times being the uh, important part of that. Okay, which, um, well, we'll write in a formula in a second. Okay, but one more example first. Uh, what if I have, uh, I'm rolling two dice, okay, and it can be simultaneously here, okay, because uh, rolling two dice at the same time is exactly the same as rolling one dice, then another dice, okay, the, the dice don't com communicate, um, they are independent of one, one another. Um, so, uh, if I roll two dice, what's the probability of getting a 12? Well, uh, I can do another sample space diagram here with 1 to 6 and 1 to 6, um, dice A, dice B, maybe. And if I start adding them up, I can see that 12 uh, is only found by getting uh, a 6 on both dice. Okay, and it's only 1 out of 36 uh, total uh, sort of, uh, totals. Um, so that would be my probability, 1 out of 36. Now again, I could have actually found that by uh, doing the probability of getting uh, a 6 times the probability of getting a 6 on the other dice. Okay, 1 6 times 1 6 equals 1 out of 36, 1 36. Um, okay, so it looks like and um, needs a, a multiplication, essentially. Um, and that is my rule here. Uh, probability of event A occurring and event B occurring uh, equals probability of A times the probability of B. Now, again, just like the uh, addition formula, uh, this only works in certain situations. And here, this only works if they are independent events. Okay, And what that means is that one event occurring does not affect the chances of the other occurring. Um, so two dice, for example, as we already said, one uh, dice A, the result doesn't affect what happens in dice B. Or my first pick of those uh, counters in that bag uh, doesn't affect the second pick uh, if I've put that uh, first one back. Okay, so if they're independent events, you may use this formula here.